Hey guys, Ben Pierce on the Rosa Tracker, and I want to talk to you guys today about misinformation in science. You see, many of you probably who came to this channel found me through a video about a star that is Kick 983227 or something like that. I'll, it'll be in the title. And it was announced about five years ago that some scientists who had looked at it had predicted that it was going to go red nova. Now, red nova is not a full supernova, but it still would suddenly become one of the brightest stars in the sky, which would be pretty cool. And quite frankly, there hasn't been a supernova in this galaxy that we have observed in almost 400 years. We're pretty much overdue for that, and it would be so awesome to see. Supernovas are some of the most exciting things you can see. There was one in the Magellan Cloud like 30-ish years ago, and people are still excited about that one, and you couldn't even really see that. So people have been excited about this, but about a year later, and about, a, well, a few months after I had posted the video talking about it, it turned out that this was not going to explode in 2022. It eventually will. This particular star is actually two stars. Their contact binaries are so close that their atmosphere is actually touching. And as a result, they're going to slowly, slowly merge into each other, eventually creating a large stellar explosion. Pretty neat to be able to watch. But I have seen an increasingly large number of people who have been commenting stuff like, well, the star is going red, or, you know, it looks like it's going to go supernova any moment. And finally, somebody actually pointed me to where all of these people are getting this information. You see, there is a person who is live streaming a simulated view, although they don't claim it's simulated, of these two stars, and you can kind of see them rotating around. And you can see one of them's larger than the other, and they're changing the color and doing all sorts of fancy things, although it's not particularly fancy graphics. They're trying to make it look that way. Well, first of all, you can't actually resolve this as two separate stars, okay? Uh, it's possible that James Webb will target it, but there is no way that they're pointing at this continually. And in any case, there was a mathematical error. The person who originally made the prediction said that, hey, I was wrong. This is not going to explode in 2022. The prediction was made actually 2022.2 plus or minus 0.6. Well, what does that mean? Well, it's easier to do these types of things not by months, but by the fraction of a year. And so 0.2 would be like early March and 0.6 means plus or minus seven months. So it could have actually happened in 2021. We're nearing the end of this window where it was even originally predicted to explode, which there again, let me iterate. This is not going to explode in 2022, not that we will observe. It's theoretically possible that it could explode now, but the way that astronomers always measure such things is Earth observed time because you'd go crazy if you were trying to predicted. We don't even know its distance that accurately to know when it's happening in real time. But this is a part of a much larger phenomena that I have observed in many, many different arenas. And I wanted to talk to you guys about this a little bit. See, when people get excited about something, they want to find things that confirm their bias, positive or negative. And let's face it, I'm not immune to this. But the more that you're aware of this fact, the more likely you are to actually look for real sources and not be excited too much with the misinformation. See, science is a continual refining of things to get more and more accurate data. And eventually, we will come up with the right solution, but it's going to take some time to, to do this. There are thousands of papers that are produced all the time. And what happens when you have a scientific advancement, then you publish a paper and the first one will get more excitement, but then you go through and you refine this. Now, 
In this particular case, the initial paper that was made predicting the stellar explosion was really, really neat and made a lot of headlines. A bunch of scientists tried to disprove this, and let's not be clear here. The first one that tried to disprove it was actually wrong. It took them looking very, very carefully to find this mistake, and they found it, corrected the data, and the model no longer predicted that the explosion was going to happen. This is how science works today. You make a prediction, you test it, and you refine as time goes on. Sometimes you throw out the original prediction, sometimes you modify it a little bit. But there is a certain portion of people who they hear something and they're just totally convinced that it is right and nothing will do this. If there is just about anything that you can answer truthfully that there is nothing that will convince you that it's wrong, well, you don't have a very scientific mindset on that. And there may be times for that, okay? You know, faith in God is perhaps one of those types of things. But for science, for the things that we can observe, you have to be willing to let go of whatever thing that you hold dearly. There have been some major, major theories over the years that have been completely disproven. Uh, the theory that led to aviation, originally airplanes were kind of thought to be impossible because you, how do you fly on something higher than air? It took the Wright brothers completely taking it down to the basics, building a wind tunnel and testing aerodynamic surfaces for them to realize that the common thinking of the day was totally flat wrong and they were able to make an advancement in the form of a airplane that was able to take off from the ground with some help. But you have to be able to let go of the ideas when they're disproven. That doesn't mean you can't challenge them. Challenging them is fine. But you have to, at the end of the day, be convincible of this. And we see this today in so many ways. Um, just to name a few, climate change, the earth is getting warmer, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, there are higher levels of carbon dioxide today than there was in the past. Those three things are indisputable. The source of it is from us burning oil and gasoline and coal and all of those kinds of things for our energy needs. Now. Does that mean there's not some room for improvement? Of course there is. You know, how big of an effect it will have can be updated and has been refined with time. But that doesn't mean that the original prediction is wrong. We know and learn things better with time. Uh, we can see that in the results of COVID-19. People are going crazy with anti-vax literature. There has been very, very, very few people who have died because of COVID-19 vaccine. You're talking one in tens of millions of people who die because of the COVID-19 vaccine. And quite frankly, they probably would have died if they had got COVID in anyways. These things though, they're sensationalized. They take something inside of us and I, I'm not a scientist, I don't know exactly what that is. But whatever our preconceived notions are, they become expanded. You know, even President Trump, who many of the people who have been afraid of the COVID-19 vaccines, President Trump was a little bit leery, but he has been vaccinated and he is encouraging people to get vaccinated, okay? These things though, they it doesn't matter who says it, you know, some, part of these people is totally convinced. I don't really know where I'm going with this, but one thing I will say is don't ever completely, totally trust me or really anyone. When you have something that you're a little suspicious, do some digging around. You know, for the, the supernova kick 27, whatever it is, big giant number that I can't memorize. 
this star, if you Google it, you can see the top few entries from Wikipedia, from a bunch of news outlets that said, hey, yep, it's actually not going to blow up. There's no one who says it does other than this random few YouTube channels that are producing this content. And they're probably making a decent amount of money because people want to believe this. But don't just believe something just because you want to believe it. You guys got to use your minds, okay? And I know this is a lot different than my normal videos, but it's been kind of weighing on me. I mean, look at some of these comments that I've received here recently. Like, what is going on here? This has been completely disproven. Even the person who originally predicted it disproved it. But it continues to be pervasive in our lives. Use your mind, guys, and make sure you're using high value sites like some random YouTube channel. Like, like I said, don't ever trust anything that I say. Look it up for yourselves. Learn what the valuable resources are. You know, if you're talking about COVID-19, look at the CDC for the United States. Look at some of these other really well-noted people who are putting forth the work to give us data, who have been doing this for years, who the CDC is literally their name and their charter to protect the United States against diseases, the Center for Disease Control. They have been extremely trustworthy and I try and follow their guidance even when it seems a little silly. Yes, sometimes they're wrong, but they tend to be wrong in a way that they're being cautious until they know more information. And quite frankly, sometimes you just have to go with the best data that there is to be able to continue with things forward. <sighs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for everything. Keep sharp out there and keep on tracking. Take care, guys.